Yeah. You're listening to Quirk Line here on QWRPFM. Quirk Line this week is brought to you by the Oracular Gentacular Spectacular. When you have no idea what to make for breakfast, try consulting the, the Oracular Gentacular Spectacular because food is sustenacular. Good morning, Innsburg. It's Big G Money here with A Train. How's it going, Alex? I uh, feel a little bit like a bad bump on a work shoot. A <laughs> bad. One more time? Like a bad bump on a work shoot. On a work shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling with some demons this morning, are you? <laughs> I'm hoping to get to work on that lariat. <laughs> Terrific. Well, I hope everyone's having a, a pleasant morning out there in scenic Innsburg. Just slip it on and see if it feels good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was that one from uh, the, the the linen store? That was no. That was that was one of the Innsburg town slogans. I, there there may have been a there may have been a yet further clerical error. Oh dear! They yeah. really got to work on that filing system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now the news. We actually do this every we time. We have oh, that. Oh, there oh, we go. Yeah. yeah. Innsburg Transit has revealed its new plan for driver safety escape hatches in case of unruly customers migrating bee swarms or the bus filling with clotted cream. The Benson Door, named for Ethan Benson, the driver who died in the clotted cream uh, flood of 2009, will be added to existing buses whenever Ball Hinckley is finished with the acetylene torch. <laughs> and a warning from Innsburg PD of a bear sighting in the town square. Citizens are being urged to keep their distance until Innsburg Park and Game can tranquilize the animal and transport it beyond city limits. As is tradition, this season's biannual bear scare in the square is brought to you by Hover Pharma Chemicals. <laughs> you think they get better at this every year? <clears throat> well, they've finally started selling uh, uh, selling uh, uh, branded binoculars, <laughs> so you can watch from a safe distance. I don't, I don't really think that's the problem, but uh... no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. First up, uh, it's uh, it's the arts with Edith Slump. Hello, Edith. How's it going? Hello, Graham. As a warning to engineering, this voice is not very loud, so you might need to turn my mic you, up. You you might just want this one. I'm already wearing a mic. I know. I can't wear two mics. That's obscene. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're not here. We're not here to judge. You do you. <laughs> what are you? Or they do you? Love comes in all forms. <laughs> What, what are you here to talk about today, today, Edith? Well, occasionally we do open up the arts box to suggestions. And I had a suggestion from uh, Erica, who's 16, who said that we should review more video games oh, no. on the arts segment. Uh, and she suggested something called uh, Minecraft. <laughs> but uh, I don't think that's an appropriate book to be discussing on the air. So. We it's, it's a bad joke. It's a bad joke. Just keep going. Ah. <laughs> Roll on through, guys. That really took me a second. So, <laughs> took the chat 30. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided I would head down to the local Blockbuster and see what they had in store. That's our uh, local historical site, isn't it? That's right. The plaque is still on order, but it's the last surviving blockbuster in the contiguous Americas. <laughs> As opposed to the non-contiguous Americas. Don't sass Hawaii again, <laughs> I. <laughs> I can't deal with the letters. <laughs> Gus likes getting the letters, but I can't deal with them. All right, so <sighs> I went down to the local blockbuster and I asked the very nice clerk there, uh, what uh, what games the kids wanted to play, and uh, he gave me an option of two. One was Sonic Forces, but I am allergic to hedgehogs, so I thought I'd better go with the classic title. Uh, and so uh, he asked me what game system I had, and I said, I think the station has an old Sega Genesis from a Christmas party, 
uh, 10 or 20 years ago. Oh. I'm not a video game person, but he assured me that Shaq Fu was something <laughs> all the kids are into. <laughs> he assured me that this was a very good video game and that I would enjoy myself very much. Apparently it stars former NBA superstar Shaquille O'Neal. And I, uh, I guess he retired to make video games or something. And, 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 and did you enjoy it? I mean, I don't really play video games, but I did find the, uh, the story quite compelling. <laughs> the gameplay, however, left a lot to be desired. I, I, uh, I legitimately don't know. Edith, what, what is the story of Shaq Fu? You save a young boy named Nezu from an evil mummy named Set Ra. <laughs> I swear that was a Thundercats pilot. <laughs> I mean, I haven't watched Thundercats either. I feel like I've been wasting my art's time reading like classical literature and listening to classical music when there was all these undiscovered treasures over in the blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, it comes up a lot. <laughs> it is the last place in town you can rent uh, the dub version of uh, Rhyme One Half, after all. <laughs> That reminds me of you coming on Sunday night for the club meeting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got an LD of uh, Yurase Yatsura that I can bring over. Gus will be so excited. Oh, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, based on my limited experience with video games, I give Shaq Fu Two thumbs up. I don't really know how to evaluate them other than that, but I'm sure no child would be disappointed to see the local blockbuster's copy of Shaq Fu <laughs> under the Christmas tree this year. <laughs> I, I don't think that's correct, <laughs> but I appreciate your input. Either. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, next week, I'll be back with another video game. Did you know the Spice Girls made a video game? <laughs> I did the not. The man at the blockbuster assured me that it was very popular. Who is this guy, and how do we stop him? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wait, ask me if you have any, if I have anything else in your arts. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> do you have anything else? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a running gig. <laughs> Thank you. Check. Thank you, Edith. Uh, and, uh, now, uh, oh, also in the studio, yes, yes, on the vague sheet of, running sheet of the show that Gus handed me just before we started, uh, look. Is that a napkin? Yep. <laughs> and he wrote on it oh, in ketchup. more organized every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, uh, he, I don't know why he didn't use the crayons that they provided at the, at the diner. Or, you know, the paper. That would have been considerate. Yeah, we should really talk to Gus about that. But um, next is, uh, I don't know why we're inviting her back, but uh, L Lorna Schlitzwhistle is here. Oh. Oh, good. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Oh, Graham and A-Train, it's so good to see you. Did you get the beautiful shipment of mandalas I sent you? The last time we spoke, I felt that there was an evil spirit in your deep freeze, and I was very concerned for you. Also, maybe some of the baseboard heaters in your basement, and occasionally, but not in every one, of the wood panels that you put into the garage. Uh, I felt in true Buddhist tradition we should uh, return it to the void, so I did. The That's very holistic of you. <laughs> The freezer was just some very old eggplant casserole. Was that was that Derek's lunch? I it hasn't been for months if it <laughs> if it was originally. He needs to stop using the fridge for the weird well, stuff his mom sends with hang him. Hang on, somebody in the office is using that fridge. I mean, has I I don't. I have a theory. As you can see, ghosts are all around us, <laughs> leaving their unmarked Tupperware. Shoo shoo, evil, disruptive spirits. But peace be with you, and namaste. Ghosts, Michael O'Leary, one of those. They're impossible to tell apart sometimes. 
Both of them appear at random out of cupboards. <laughs> That's his front door. I resent that fact because I live in a closet. <laughs> I can hear them now. <laughs> I mean, what are you here to talk about this week? Oh, I'm here to talk about the fourth quarter holidays that are coming up. Oh, right. And how so many people look to me for guidance about gifts. So I was asked by Gus, he's my cousin, you know, to come in and give a presentation on holiday gift giving. We're, 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 we're acutely aware that Gus is your cousin. And that this is a throw for your Etsy store. <laughs> the holidays, <clears throat> Lorna? Well, I could suggest everybody gets a beautiful dream catcher, but that seems perhaps a little bit self-promotional, don't you agree? Yes. I'm experiencing emotions. I, so I would, I'm taking the moral high road and I'm saying, do not buy dream catchers for Capricorns or Cancers. They would be much better served by a set of decorative salt crystals. For the Taurus in your life, they're born under the strong earth sign of the bull. And they need something more practical. Something connected to the earth that they draw their strength from. Such as an iron shovel. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually useful. Yeah. Huh. Or... A set of coordinated necklaces made of graphite. That's more like it. Graphite is extremely good at cleansing the spirit and the mind and eight of the eleven chakras. Eleven? <laughs> Does the iron shovel help chakras or against ghosts? No, but that's very good if you want to put in some rutabagas into your garden in the spring. Or turnips. I think that all you should just plant whatever you need to plant. Don't You don't need my guidance for that. So do you think I should get Michael a, a, a shovel? Well, I don't think he has a yard. Uh, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> but I feel... I need somewhere to bury my waist. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that you can do... I thought you were using the bathroom beside the break room. <laughs> so did I! I've decided to go more holistic. <laughs> no! Oh, no. <laughs> we might be needing that shovel after all. Now, I feel like these are very... So these are suggestions for people without problems. But what if somebody you know... Who has the numerology? Who is has the numerology number of five? Is being pestered by Fay and Mary folks from beyond the moon. <laughs> that sounds like an extreme hardship. It happened to my aunt. It was at worst annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine what that must be like. Well, all your milk turns into sour cream. No matter how fresh, no matter even if you don't want sour cream or if you do. If you do have sour cream and you're like, perfect, now I can make a stroganoff. It'll turn back into fresh milk just as you're going to go put it in and it just ruins your sauce. So those, those fey folk, they're very tricksy. But you know what repels them is cold iron. So you get some iron circlets, some iron necklaces, or maybe just some iron filings to sprinkle around your door frame, like diatomaceous earth for bugs. <laughs> or an iron shovel? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think that would work? How have you not been pestered by the Fae before? <laughs> <laughs> because you said that th th they need cold iron is the bad for them. If your I Ching sign is like two lines and a broken line and then two other lines. <laughs> Pink! 
is what you should be looking for in, under the tree. Pink items. They'll cleanse their energies. So pink iron filings. No, and not unless they're being pestered by the Fae. Oh. Which is not as a common problem as you think, but it's common enough I thought I would mention it in the in the spirit of public interest. <laughs> okay. So like some of that um uh the, the that pink like Himalayan salt? No. <laughs> You're not Do you do like gift exchanges or do people just give you gift cards? I'm really trying. Pink is a very powerful color. It harnesses the power of rainbows and positive energy and unicorn poops and sunlight. Also, pink carnations, but not other colors of carnations. Because it's pink. Pink items are known to bring new focus and clarity to someone. And if you do have the I Ching sign of the two lines and the broken lines and two other solid lines, the 2018 will be a taxing year for you. Graham, that's your I Ching sign, did you know? I legitimately had no idea. I think you should introduce. Do you feel taxed at all? I feel taxed. Frequently. <laughs> pink, you need more pink things in your life. Like Pepto-Bismol. Yeah, that'd be great right now. And finally, Alex. I have prepared, you have such a hard job as the Aldersman, so I've prepared a special gift list just for you. So if anybody is listening and they wish to send you a congratulatory item for doing such a good job representing our interests in the, uh, in the Thurston County Council meetings, I would really appreciate it. I just think Alex is doing such a good job. By the way, please vote no on the Lower East Sump Acres proposal to extend the culvert grid. Thank you very much. It will run right next to my house. Okay. <laughs> I'll get right on that. So one of the things that you should send to Alex, our wonderful aldersman, uh, this is uh, a, book that, uh, a book that's very popular on Amazon. Not in my backyard. No to the East Sump Acres culvert grid expansion project. By Lorna Slitch Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming this week, oh, Lorna. I have more. No, <laughs> oh, I bet. We are out of time. I'm so sorry. <gasps> Goodbye. Thank you very much. Namaste. <laughs> namaste. Yeah, yes, I wish you would namaste at home as well. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of people we are reluctantly associated with as the result of this show, it's time for traffic, and we go now to Richter Hammock Slam up in the QWRP traffic copter. How's it going up there, Richter? Hard to tell, Graham. I am currently still on the pad at the moment, waiting for instructions, as I believe they are flooding it for me to take off. Flood. Flooding what? The helicopter pad, Graham. Otherwise, those boosters could liquefy the concrete and those below, causing untold amounts of damage. <laughs> Richter, a bunch of line items in our budget suddenly made a horrible amount of sense just now. And I'd like you to lie to me about what they are. Oh, those are just precautionary measures. <laughs> <laughs> Are they? We don't want to cause any more damage to the building, and I couldn't get a loan large enough. <coughs> you see, when you need more money than you currently have, if you make a smart enough sounding proposal, and you're a public figure like me, people will believe you. <laughs> oh boy. You know we're live right now, right? Yes. Which is why I need just a few more minutes to get things started here. Could you... No, please. We need to stop his countdown or get to minimum safe distance in a big hurry. It's okay. I have had a look at the documentation for this surplus Buran shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. It seems like you should be at a minimum safe distance. It only mentions a radius, not whether that radius is lateral or vertical. <laughs> I think it's spherical, and I think we're in great danger. Uh, 
It should be fine. Oh, I should mention. Did Edith get my copy of Randall one third? Michael, do you have any fire blankets? It's a hilarious hentai parody of oh gotta go. I've got a praise for this one. Back to you, Graham. I'm so happy that we are not incinerated right now. <laughs> Ground control to Major Tom. Please go away. Um, I look forward to hearing what the traffic is like in the upper troposphere. Yeah, that's going to be really useful for people trying to get to work today. It will be exactly as useful as his normal report. You're not wrong. Oh. <sighs> It's prob you're right, it's probably we're probably safe because of all that asbestos in the roof. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for terrible safety standards. Okay, in a moment we're gonna go to the phones, but I just very quickly wanted to remind everybody listening at home that if they donate nine dollars and five cents in the next eleven minutes, they'll be entered to win a a life size Morgana from Persona Five Amigurumi, which you can see here. If you weren't on the radio. Yes. We weren't sure how we aren't sure how much longer our totally unknown live thing will be, so we wanted to mention this again. Don't forget multiples of that entry also enter you multiple times to to win. And now um we it's time to go to the phones. There's no music for it, but there's the graphic. Um if you're not watching the radio uh Hello! You're you're live on the air. Who's the phone segment? Sa Sandra Brentmore. All right. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. All right. Hello. Oh, it's Sandra Brentmore <laughs> from I, the Rum Tunnels. I knew it was 420. Graham, Alex, I'm just calling in to tell you guys about some beautiful seasonal promotions the Rum Tunnel is doing. For the upcoming fourth quarter holidays. Oh yeah? Yeah, we're doing Christmas time tours. Because inexplicably the rum tunnels actually get a little less dank in December. Uh, apologies on my voice, I have a bit of a cold. Very voice <laughs> down there. I was gonna say that you sound a little better this week. I'm always improving. <laughs> but we have a whole we have a whole variety of things. There's uh there's a whole there's a history of historic molds. <laughs> you can see on the walls. Black mold isn't one unanimous thing. There are many different types of black mold. Some of them are not as poisonous as others. Have you caught them all yet? I've got to 75 in my mold binder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking about your lungs, but sure. We're also doing festive make your own rum balls. We're just cracking open one of the barrels that we found at the back of the tunnels. And if it's not moldy, then it's rum ball time. And if it, if, and if it is moldy, hey, maybe that's number 76 for the old binder. <laughs> <laughs> I was under the impression that the uh, rum tunnel rum was not safe for human consumption. It is if you mix it with enough sugar. <laughs> I mean, rum balls are mostly just sugar and rum, right? <laughs> sure. Well, I think you put some sprinkles on the outside. Anyhow, and after that, we have a beautiful performance of the Innsberg Church Choir. They're that, going to be singing the traditional fourth quarter carols. That sounds lovely. Yes, I'll be participating. Oh, good. I've been told I have a lovely singing voice. Where are you keeping it? <laughs> In the rum tunnels. Beside the binder, actually. <laughs> Anyhow, that's all I wanted to call in and say. Because this voice is actually murdered. I can't do it for that long. Well, there we go, everybody. If you're looking for something to do with your family this holiday. Go on down to the rum tunnels. Gets... It's not as dank as you remember. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the tunnel of balls. This Christmas, fourth quarter. <laughs> Good heavens. Uh, if you're uh, looking for other fun stuff to do with uh, the family, why not try... A new hobby. We sent Derek down to the uh, Model Rocketry Club and Science Center to see what they're up to these days. How's it going, Derek? Hi, Graham. Hi, Alex. Hi. Hi, Derek. 
I'm enjoying my time here at the Rocketry Club so far. Um, I, I even got all dressed up today. I put on a NASA man's tie, and then I put on my, my big fake nerdy glasses because I thought that that would help me fit in with everybody down here. Um, and so far, I think it's worked very well. I'm here with, uh, I'm here with the Rocketry Club president, uh, Victor Von Bonbon. How are you doing today, Victor? <laughs> very well under the circumstances. Thank you so much. We don't normally use the, the mic microphones around here, I would imagine, because you're just everyone's all in one room, right? We, usually we have the headsets, but uh, you did not want to make you think that you did not have your uh, full costume ready. So. Oh, that's very that's that's very inclusive of you. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Um, so I was I was expecting to come down here today because um, I wanted to see all the great things that uh, NASA's investment in Innsberg have have brought us. Yes. Investment, that, that is the word you could use, yes. Yeah, so, um, so, when, so uh, I, I, did, I did hear a great rumble earlier. Uh, does that mean that we're actually started launching rockets here now? Ah, uh, yes, the, the, the launch, yes. That was, uh, that was quite an achievement for the Rocket Tree Club. Uh, many of these students, who are also members of the Girl Scouts, uh, earned a very nice badge that uh, I cannot read because some of the R's are backwards and we do not have those. <laughs> uh, Derek, I just want to interrupt you very briefly. Uh, to mention that uh, we're we're uh, the the radio station is experiencing a uh, raid from the Zelda Thon, and you've picked a very awkward time to come in. But welcome to welcome to Desert Bus and all the stuff is happening, all the stuff that's that's happening here. And uh, Derek, I think you meant when you said Rumble, did you mean Rumball? No, no, specifically, I heard a great rumble a little while ago. Um, <laughs> like in the jungle. Yeah, like a rumble in the jungle, except it's came, it sounded like it came from downtown, which is really weird, um, because I don't think we have any launch pads in downtown. Oh. Yeah, we do now. <laughs> or we did now. That's amazing. How do we get that installed without our knowledge? I'd love to know. <laughs> well, I'm guessing that we're probably connected with this Dr. Von Bon Bon. Um, you, you are a doctor, right? I'm... Yes. That was what was on the business card that somebody gave me once that had your name on it. it, it I am a doctor, but not a medicine. It is a common mistake. People oh. are always asking me to look at this rash on the wrist or something, and I say, I cannot tell you. I can put it in space, but you may have cancer. It's very sad. <laughs> <laughs> cancer is sad. <laughs> so anyway, um, you have to now suffer under the judgment of my hard-hitting questions. <laughs> um, so question one. Why was there a great rumble coming from the area of downtown? Because we didn't have a launch pad there, and now we do? Ah, that would be because of the solid booster rockets, mixing this harmonically with the, the main engines on the back of the Buran. Uh, they, they form a standing wave, and uh, you want to reduce that to liquid on the pad. We launched the Buran? Yes, it's quite an achievement, did, actually. Did we have the energy a rocket to go with it? No, not as such. We mainly <laughs> used a combination of, uh, how do you say, d size motors? Uh, strapped about 50,000 of them together in a very complex method of uh, one after the other firing it. That seems impossible, but it must be true because you're telling it to me. Yes, I, I am a doctor. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, this is kind of, like, guys, this is mind-blowing for me because I'm, an, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of uh, Russian aeronautics. And, um, I mean, I thought the Buran was destroyed in a hangar collapse in 2002. <laughs> Could you ask the doctor to speak directly into his microphone? Oh, yes, I'm very sorry about that. Very this is wild. I don't know how we could have possibly got Did we get it on surplus? Are we allowed to have it in whatever country Ernsberg is in? When you do not have enough money for something, and you ask people for more money than you have, if you give them a succinct plan, and you are, uh, say, a public figure like a doctor, then they will give you that money. And then you can purchase uh, used Buran. The, the Buran was chosen simply because it is a, a lower cost. All of the space shuttles, they are owned by the Air and Science Museum, and they've... the rider on the insurance is just insanity. I, I can't even imagine that it's space-worthy. Like, did you launch it unmanned? Can confirm he did not. <laughs> oh my god, that man is doomed! <laughs> oh no. God willing. Oh darn. <laughs> not at all, not at all. You see, there's atmosphere, a surprising, uh, surprising amount of brief atmosphere, very high up. As long as we do not send the actual rocket into orbit, then it'll be fine. At that point, it's less of a rocket and more, say, ballistic. A rock. 
<laughs> it's, un, it's unpowered. Yeah, you're right. That's a, it is more of kind of a giant metal rock at that point. But in the hands of a skilled pilot, they may be able to land somewhere. And if they're lucky, find an island in the middle of the South Pacific. Oh, I, I can buy it. Um, I, I imagine that, yeah, as long as they take very deep breaths and, and hold them for a long period of time, they're not going to have any sort of problems with, like, losing uh, lo losing available oxygen. Oh, yes, the oxygen will not be a problem. The frostbite on the other hand, well, they may come back with certain disfigurements, but again, that is not my area of expertise. So then what's <laughs> next for the Model Rocket Club here in Innsbruck? Ah, yes, they are going to create the largest model rocket ever produced in Innsbruck. It is a one-to-one -one scale model of the Saturn V. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Unfortunately, there are no buildings large enough in Innsbruck to house it. So they have, uh, what do you call them, the, the rum tunnels. Uh, it's being constructed inside of these tunnels. And I, as long as there's nothing flammable down there, it can possibly be ignited by a rocket going off. We can be looking forward to a test uh, firing of the engines perhaps later on this week. Uh oh! That sounds very encouraging, actually. And despite the fact that the Innsbruck Rum Tunnels are, are a historical treasure and should not be molested in any way at all, I'm looking forward to see what science is going to bring us. Back to you, Graham and Alex. I think that the doctor maybe needs to reevaluate the words due diligence. I think I need to reevaluate my job. <laughs> Where can we find that's got lots and lots of asbestos around it? The school? Oh, <laughs> perfect. All right, we're going to go hide in the school, and that takes us up to the break. Uh, when we come back, uh, or wait, yeah, hit that music. There we go. When we come back. At Innsburg PD Bulletin to really, actually, please not approach the bear. <laughs> Frederick from Innsburg Park and Game is still getting the traditional sedation suit on, and he'll be there as soon as he can. And an exclusive interview with Innsburg's infamous cryptid, the Dogeman. What makes him tick, and can we remove it surgically? <laughs> Stick around, more Corp Line after this. You're listening to Quirp Line here on QWRPFM. Thanks again to our sponsor, the Oracular Gentacular Spectacular. When you have no idea what to make for breakfast, consult the Oracular Gentacular Spectacular. It's an obscure part of the vernacular. <laughs> <laughs> 